Vladimir Vladimirovich Mayakovsky, Russian, Vladimir Vladimirovich Makovsky, the 19th of July, OS the 7th of July, 1893 to 14 April 1930, was a Soviet poet, playwright, artist, and actor. During his early, pre-revolution period leading into 1917, Mayakovsky became renowned as a prominent figure of the Russian Futurist movement, being among the signers of the Futurist Manifesto, A Slap in the Face of Public Taste 1913, and authoring poems such as A Cloud in Trousers 1915, and Backbone Flute 1916. Mayakovsky produced a large and diverse body of work during the course of his career. He wrote poems, wrote and directed plays, appeared in films, edited the art journal LEF, and created agitprop posters in support of the Communist Party during the Russian Civil War. Though Mayakovsky's work regularly demonstrated ideological and patriotic support for the ideology of the Communist Party and a strong admiration of Vladimir Lenin, Mayakovsky's relationship with the Soviet state was always complex and often tumultuous. Mayakovsky often found himself engaged in confrontation with the increasing involvement of the Soviet state in cultural censorship and the development of the state doctrine of socialist realism. Works that contained criticism or satire of aspects of the Soviet system, such as the poem, Talking with the Taxman About Poetry, 1926, and the plays The Bedbug 1929 and The Bathhouse 1929, were met with scorn by the Soviet state and literary establishment. In 1930 Mayakovsky committed suicide. Even after death his relationship with the Soviet state remained unsteady. Though Mayakovsky had previously been harshly criticized by Soviet governmental bodies like the Russian Association of Proletarian Writers RAP, Joseph Stalin posthumously declared Mayakovsky, "...the best and the most talented poet of our Soviet epoch." Life and career Vladimir Vladimirovich Mayakovsky was born in Baghdati, Kutai's governorate, Georgia, then part of the Russian Empire, to Vladimir Konstantinovich Mayakovsky, a local forester, who belonged to a noble family and was a distant relative of the writer Grigory Danilevsky. Vladimir Vladimirovich's mother Alexandra Alexeyevna Pavlenko, was a housewife, looking after the children, a son and two daughters, Olga and Lyudmila their brother Konstantin died at the age of three. The family was of Russian and Zaporozhian Cossack descent on their father's side and Ukrainian on their mother's. At home the family spoke Russian. With his friends and at school Mayakovsky used Georgian. I was born in the Caucasus, my father is a Cossack, my mother is Ukrainian. My mother tongue is Georgian. Thus three cultures are united in me. He told the Prague newspaper Prager Press in a 1927 interview. Georgia for Mayakovsky remained the eternal symbol of beauty. I know, it's nonsense, Eden and paradise, but since people sang about them, it must have been Georgia, the joyful land, that those poets were having in mind. He wrote later, in 1902 Mayakovsky joined the Kutais Gymnasium where, as a 14-year-old he took part in socialist demonstrations at the town of Kutaisi. His mother, aware of his activities, apparently didn't mind. People around warned us we were giving a young boy too much freedom. But I saw him developing according to the new trends, sympathized with him and pandered to his aspirations." She later remembered. After the sudden and premature death of his father in 1906 he pricked his finger with a rusty pin while filing papers and died of blood poisoning the family—Mayakovsky, his mother, and his two sisters—moved to Moscow after selling all their movable property. In July 1906 Mayakovsky joined the fourth form of the Moscow's fifth classic gymnasium and soon developed a passion for Marxist literature. Never cared for fiction. For me it was philosophy, Hegel, natural sciences, but first and foremost, Marxism. There'd be no higher art for me than the foreword by Marx, he recalled in the 1920s in his autobiography I, Myself. In 1907 Mayakovsky became a member of his gymnasium's underground Social Democrats circle, taking part in numerous activities of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party which he, given the nickname, Comrade Konstantin, joined the same year. In 1908, the boy was dismissed from the gymnasium because his mother was no longer able to afford the tuition fees. For two years he studied at the Stroganov School of Industrial Arts, where his sister Lyudmila had started her studies a few years earlier. 
As a young Bolshevik activist, Mayakovsky distributed propaganda leaflets, possessed a pistol without a license, and in 1909 got involved in smuggling female political activists out of prison. This resulted in a series of arrests and finally an 11-month imprisonment. It was in a solitary confinement of the Moscow Butyrka prison that Mayakovsky started writing verses for the first time. Revolution and poetry got entangled in my head and became one, he wrote in I, myself. As an underage person, Mayakovsky avoided a serious prison sentence with subsequent deportation and in January 1910 was released. A warden confiscated the young man's notebook, and years later Mayakovsky conceded that was all for the better, yet he always cited 1909 as the year his literary career started. Upon his release from prison, Mayakovsky remained an ardent socialist, but realized his own inadequacy as a serious revolutionary. Having left the party, never to rejoin it, he concentrated on education. I stopped my party activities. Sat down and started to learn. Now my intention was to make the socialist art. He later remembered, in 1911 Mayakovsky enrolled in the Moscow Art School. In September 1911 a brief encounter with fellow student David Berlick which nearly ended with a fight led to lasting friendship and had historic consequences for the nascent Russian futurist movement. Mayakovsky became an active member and soon a spokesman for the group Hylaea, Gilia which sought to free the arts from academic traditions. Its members would read poetry on street corners, throw tea at their audiences, and make their public appearances an annoyance for the art establishment. Berlick, on having heard Mayakovsky's verses, declared him a genius poet. Later Soviet researchers tried to downplay the significance of the fact, but even after their friendship ended and their ways parted, Mayakovsky continued to give credit to his mentor, referring to him as, "...my wonderful friend. It was Berlich who turned me into a poet. He read the French and the Germans to me. He pressed books on me. He would come and talk endlessly. He didn't let me get away. He would subside me with fifty kopecks each day so that I'd write and not be hungry." Mayakovsky wrote in, I, myself. Topic. Literary career On 17 November 1912, Mayakovsky made his first public performance at Stray Dog, the artistic basement in St. Petersburg. In December of that year his first published poems, Night, Knock and Morning. Utro appeared in the Futurists' Manifesto A Slap in the Face of Public Taste, signed by Mayakovsky, as well as Velimir Klebnikov, David Berlich and Alexei Krutchenik, calling among other things for throwing Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, etc., etc., off the steamboat of the modernity. In October 1913 Mayakovsky gave the performance at the Pink Lantern Café, reciting his new poem, Take That, Nate for the First Time. The concert at the Petersburg's Luna Park saw the premiere of the poetic monodrama Vladimir Mayakovsky, with the author in a leading role, stage decorations designed by Pavel Filonov and Iosif Shkolnik. In 1913 Mayakovsky's first poetry collection called I a came out, its original limited edition 300 copies lithographically printed. This four-poem cycle, handwritten and illustrated by Vasily Chekhrigin and Leo Shechtel, later formed part one of the 1916 compilation Simple as Mooing. In December 1913 year Mayakovsky along with his fellow futurist group members embarked on the Russian tour, which took them to 17 cities, including some Faripol, Sevastopol, Kerch, Odessa and Kishinev. It was a riotous affair. The audiences would go wild and often the police stopped the readings. The poets dressed outlandishly, and Mayakovsky, a regular scandal maker, in his own words, used to appear on stage in a self-made yellow shirt which became the token of his early stage persona. The tour ended on 13 April 1914 in Kaluga and cost Mayakovsky and Berlich their education, both were expelled from the art school, their public appearances deemed incompatible with the school's academic principles. They learned of it while in Poltava from the local police chief, who chose the occasion as a pretext to ban the futurists from performing on stage, having won 65 rubles in a lottery. In May 1914, Mayakovsky went to Kwakala, near Petrograd. 
Here he put the finishing touches to A Cloud in Trousers, frequented Korny Chukovsky's dacha, sat for Ilya Repin's painting sessions and met Maxim Gorky for the first time. As World War I began, Mayakovsky volunteered but was rejected as politically unreliable. He worked for the Lubick Today Company which produced patriotic Lubick pictures, and in the November Virgin Land newspaper, which published several of his anti-war poems. Mother and an evening killed by the Germans. Quote, comma, quote. The war is declared. Quote, comma, quote. Me and Napoleon, among others. In summer 1915, Mayakovsky moved to Petrograd where he started contributing to the new Satyricon magazine, writing mostly humorous verse in the vein of Sasha T. Chorna, one of the journal's former stalwarts. Then Maxim Gorky invited the poet to work for his journal, Letopus. In June of that year, Mayakovsky fell in love with a married woman, Lilia Breek, who eagerly took upon herself the role of a muse. Her husband Osip Breek seemed not to mind and became the poet's close friend. Later, he published several books by Mayakovsky and used his entrepreneurial talents to support the futurist movement. This love affair, as well as his ideas on World War I and socialism, strongly influenced Mayakovsky's best-known works, A Cloud in Trousers 1915, his first major poem of appreciable length, followed by Backbone Flute 1915, The War and the World 1916, and The Man 1918. .When his mobilization form finally arrived in the autumn of 1915, Mayakovsky found himself unwilling to go to the front lines. Assisted by Gorky, he joined the Petrograd Military Driving School as a draftsman and was studying there until early 1917. In 1916 Peru's The Sale publishers again led by Gorky, published Mayakovsky's poetry compilation called Simple as Mooing. 1917–1920 Mayakovsky embraced the Bolshevik Russian Revolution wholeheartedly and for a while even worked in Smolny, Petrograd, where he saw Vladimir Lenin, "...to accept or not to accept, there was no such question, that was my revolution." He wrote in I, Myself Autobiography. In November 1917 he took part in the Communist Party's Central Committee sanctioned assembly of writers, painters and theater directors who expressed their allegiance to the new political regime. In December that year, the Left March Mars 1918 premiered at the Navy Theater, with sailors as an audience. In 1918, Mayakovsky started the short lived futurist paper. He also starred in three silent films made at the Neptune Studios in Petrograd he had written scripts for. The only surviving one, The Lady and the Hooligan, was based on the La Maestrina degli Operai the workers young schoolmistress published in 1895 by Edmondo de Amicis, and directed by Yevgeny Slavinsky. The other two, Born Not for the Money and Shackled by Film were directed by Nikon D.R. Turkin and are presumed lost. On 7 November 1918 Mayakovsky's play Mystery Booth premiered at the Petrograd Musical Drama Theater. Representing a universal flood and the subsequent joyful triumph of the unclean, the proletariat over the clean, the bourgeoisie, this satirical drama's reworked, 1921 version enjoyed even greater popular acclaim. However, the author's attempt to make a film of the play failed, its language deemed incomprehensible for the masses. In March 1919, Mayakovsky moved back to Moscow where Vladimir Mayakovsky's collected works 1909 1919 was released. The same month, he started working for the Russian state telegraph agency, Rasta, creating both graphic and text satirical agitprop posters, aimed mostly at informing the country's largely illiterate population of the current events. In the cultural climate of the early Soviet Union, his popularity grew rapidly, even if among the members of the first Bolshevik government, only Anatoly Lunacharsky supported him, others treated the futurist art more skeptically. Mayakovsky's 1921 poem, 150 Million Failed to Impress Lenin, who apparently saw in it little more than a formal futuristic experiment. More favorably received by the Soviet leader was his next one, Re-Conferences, which came out in April. A vigorous spokesman for the Communist Party, Mayakovsky expressed himself in many ways. 
Contributing simultaneously to numerous Soviet newspapers, he poured out topical propagandistic verses and wrote didactic booklets for children while lecturing and reciting all over Russia. In May 1922, after a performance at the House of Publishing at the charity auction collecting money for the victims of Pavolzhi famine, he went abroad for the first time, visiting Riga, Berlin, and Paris, where he was invited to the studios of Leger and Picasso. Several books, including The West and Paris Cycles 1922 came out as a result. From 1922 to 1928, Mayakovsky was a prominent member of the Left Art Front he helped to found and coin its literature of fact, not fiction, credo, and for a while defined his work as communist futurism. He edited, along with Sergei Tretiakov and OSIP Breek, the journal LEF, its stated objective being re-examining the ideology and practices of the so-called leftist art, rejecting individualism and increasing art's value for the developing communism." The journal's first, March 1923, issue featured Mayakovsky's poem about that Pro it regarded as a LEF manifesto, it soon came out as a book illustrated by Alexander Rodchenko, who also used some photographs made by Mayakovsky and Lilia Breek. In May 1923, Mayakovsky spoke at a massive protest rally in Moscow, in the wake of Vatslav Vorovsky's assassination. In October 1924, he gave numerous public readings of the 3,000 line epic Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, written on the death of the Soviet communist leader. Next February it came out as a book, published by Gosizdat. Five years later Mayakovsky's rendition of the third part of the poem, at the Lenin Memorial Evening in the Bolshoi Theater ended with 20 minutes ovation. In May 1925 Mayakovsky's second trip took him to several European cities, then to the United States, Mexico and Cuba. The book of essays My Discovery of America came out later that year. In January 1927, the first issue of the new LEF magazine came out, again under Mayakovsky's supervision, now focusing on the documentary art. In all, 24 issues of it came out. In October 1927, Mayakovsky recited his new poem All Right, Haroso for the audience of the Moscow Party Conference activists in the Moscow's Red Hall. In November 1927 a play called The 25th and based upon the All Right poem premiered at the Leningrad Maley Opera Theater. In summer 1928, disillusioned with LEF, he left both the organization and its magazine. 1929–1932 In 1929 the publishing house Gosledizdat released the works by V.V. Mayakovsky in four volumes. In September 1929 the first assembly of the newly formed REF group gathered with Mayakovsky in the chair. But behind this facade the poet's relationship with the Soviet literary establishment was quickly deteriorating. Both the REF organized exhibition of Mayakovsky's work, celebrating the 20th anniversary of his literary career and the parallel event in the Writers' Club, 20 years of work in February 1930, were ignored by the RAP members and, more importantly, the party leadership, particularly Stalin whose attendance he was greatly anticipating. It was becoming evident that the experimental art was no longer welcomed by the regime, and the country's most famous poet irritated a lot of people. Two of Mayakovsky's satirical plays, written specifically for Meyerkold Theater, The Bedbug 1929, and, in particular, the Bathhouse evoked stormy criticism from the Russian Association of Proletarian Writers. In February 1930 Mayakovsky joined RAP, only to find himself labeled Papuchik which from the days of Lenin amounted to a potentially deadly political accusation. The smear campaign was started in the Soviet press, sporting slogans like, Down with Mayakovshina. On 9 April 1930 Mayakovsky, reading his new poem, At the Top of My Voice was shouted down by the student audience, for being too obscure. Topic. Death On 12 April 1930, Mayakovsky was seen in public for the last time. He took part in a discussion at the Sovnarkom meeting concerning the proposed copyright law. On 14 April 1930, his current partner, actress Veronika Polonskaya, upon leaving his flat, heard a shot behind the closed door. She rushed in and found the poet lying on the floor, he had apparently shot himself through the heart. The handwritten death note read, To all of you. I die, but don't blame anyone for it, and please do not gossip. The deceased disliked that sort of thing terribly. 
Mother, sisters, comrades, forgive me, this is not a good method I do not recommend it to others, but there is no other way out for me. Lily, love me. Comrade government, my family consists of Lily Breek, Mama, my sisters, and Veronica Vitoldovna Polonskaya. If you can provide a decent life for them, thank you. Give the poem I started to the bricks. They'll sort them out. The unfinished poem in his suicide note read, in part, and so they say. The incident dissolved. The love boat smashed up, on the dreary routine. I'm through with life, and we should absolve, from mutual hurts, afflictions and spleen." Mayakovsky's funeral on 17 April 1930, was attended by around 150,000, the third largest event of public mourning in Soviet history, surpassed only by those of Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin. He was interred at the Moscow Novodevichy Cemetery. Topic. Controversy surrounding death Mayakovsky committed suicide after a dispute with Polonskaya, with whom he had a brief but unstable romance. Polonskaya, who was in love with the poet, but unwilling to leave her husband, was the last one to see Mayakovsky alive. But, as Lilia Breek stated in her memoirs, the idea of suicide was like a chronic disease inside him, and like any chronic disease it worsened under circumstances that, for him, were undesirable. According to Polonskaya, Mayakovsky mentioned suicide on 13 April, when the two were at Valentin Katayev's place, but she thought he was trying to emotionally blackmail her and refused to believe for a second he could do such a thing. The circumstances of Mayakovsky's death became a matter of lasting controversy. It appeared that the suicide note had been written two days before his death. Soon after the poet's death, Lilia and OSIP Bricks were hastily sent abroad. The bullet removed from his body didn't match the model of his pistol, and his neighbors were later reported to say they'd heard two shots. Ten days later, the officer investigating the poet's suicide was himself killed, fueling speculation about the nature of Mayakovsky's death. Such speculation, often alluding to suspicion of murder by state services, especially intensified during the periods of first Khrushchevian destalinization, later Glasnost, and perestroika, as Soviet politicians sought to weaken Stalin's reputation or Breeks, and by association, Stalin's and the positions of contemporary opponents. According to Chantal Sundaram, the extent to which rumors of Mayakovsky's murder remained widespread is indicated by the fact that even as late as the end of 1991 they prompted the State Mayakovsky Museum to commission an expert medical and criminological inquiry into the material evidence of his death kept in the museum, photographs, the shirt with traces from the gunshot, the carpet on which Mayakovsky fell, and the authenticity of the suicide note. The possibility of a forgery, suggested by Andrei Koloskov, had survived as a theory with different variants. But the results of a detailed handwriting analysis found that the suicide note was undoubtedly written by Mayakovsky, and also included the conclusion that its irregularities depict a diagnostic complex, testifying to the influence at the moment of execution of disconcerting factors, among which the most probable is a psychophysiological state linked with agitation." Although the findings are hardly surprising, the event is indicative of a fascination with Mayakovsky's contradictory relationship with the Soviet authorities which survived into the era of perestroika, despite the fact that he was being attacked and rejected for his political conformism at this time. Topic. Private life. Mayakovsky met husband and wife OSIP and Lilia Bricks in July 1915 at their dacha in Malakovka nearby Moscow. Soon after that Lilia's sister Elsa, who'd had a brief affair with the poet before, invited him to the Bricks Petrograd flat. The couple at the time showed no interest in literature and were successful corals traders. That evening Mayakovsky recited the yet unpublished poem A Cloud in Trousers and announced it as dedicated to the hostess. For you, Lilia. That was the happiest day in my life," was how he referred to the episode in his autobiography years later. According to Lilia Breek's memoirs, her husband too fell in love with the poet. How could I have possibly failed to fall for him, if Asya loved him so? She once argued, whereas, Velodia did not merely fall in love with me, he attacked me, it was an assault. For two and a half years I didn't have a moment's peace. I understood right away that Velodia was a genius, but I didn't like him. 
I didn't like clamorous people. I didn't like the fact that he was so tall and people in the street would stare at him, I was annoyed that he enjoyed listening to his own voice, I couldn't even stand the name Mayakovsky. Sounding so much like a cheap pen name, both Mayakovsky's persistent adoration and rough appearance irritated her. It was, allegedly, to please her, that Mayakovsky attended a dentist, started to wear a bow tie and use a walking stick. Soon after OSIP Breek published A Cloud in Trousers in September 1915, Mayakovsky settled in the Palace Royal Hotel at the Pushkinskaya Street, Petrograd, not far from where they lived. He introduced the couple to his futurist friends and the Bricks flat quickly evolved into a modern literary salon. From then on Mayakovsky was dedicating every one of his large poems with the obvious exception of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin to Lilia. Such dedications later started to appear even in the texts he'd written before they met, much to her displeasure. In summer 1918, soon after Lilia and Vladimir starred in the film Encased in a Film only fragments of which survived, Mayakovsky and the Bricks moved in together. In March 1919 all three came to Moscow and in 1920 settled in a flat at the Gondrakov Lane, Taganka. In 1920 Mayakovsky had a brief romance with Lilia Lavinskaya, an artist who also contributed to Rasta. She gave birth to a son, Gleb Nikita Levinsky 1921-1986, later a Soviet sculptor. In 1922 Lilia Breek fell in love with Alexander Krasnishyokov, the head of the Soviet Prombank. This affair resulted in the three months rift, which was to some extent reflected in the poem about that 1923. Breek and Mayakovsky's relationships ended in 1923, but they never parted. Now I am free from placards and love. He confessed in the poem called, For the Jubilee, 1924. Still, when in 1926 Mayakovsky was granted a state-owned flat at the Gendrikov Lane in Moscow, all three of them moved in and lived there until 1930, having turned the place into the LEF headquarters, Mayakovsky continued to profess his devotion to Lilia whom he considered a family member. It was Breek who in the mid-1930s famously addressed Stalin with a personal letter which made all the difference in the way the poet's legacy has been treated since in the USSR. Still, she had many detractors among them Lyudmila Mayakovskaya, the poet's sister who regarded her insensitive femme fatale and cynical manipulator, who'd never been really interested in either Mayakovsky or his poetry. To me, she was a kind of monster. But Mayakovsky apparently loved her that way, armed with a whip. Remembered poet Andrei Voznesensky who knew Lilia Breek personally. Literary critic and historian Viktor Sklovsky who resented what he saw as the Brick's exploitation of Mayakovsky both when he lived and after his death, once called them, a family of corpse mongers. In summer 1925 Mayakovsky traveled to New York, where he met Russian émigré Elie Jones, born Yelizaveta Petrovna Zibert, an interpreter who spoke Russian, French, German and English fluently. They fell in love, for three months were inseparable, but decided to keep their affair secret. Soon after the poet's return to the Soviet Union, Elie gave birth to daughter Patricia. Mayakovsky saw the girl just once, in Nice, France, in 1928, when she was three. Patricia Thompson, a professor of philosophy and women's studies at Lehman College in New York City, is the author of the book Mayakovsky in Manhattan, in which she told the story of her parents' love affair, relying on her mother's unpublished memoirs and their private conversations prior to her death in 1985. Thompson traveled to Russia after the collapse of the Soviet Union, looking for her roots, was welcomed there with respect and since then started to use her Russian name, Yelena Vladimirovna Mayakovskaya. In 1928 in Paris Mayakovsky met Russian émigré Tatiana Yakovleva, a 22-year-old model working for the Chanel Fashion House. He fell in love madly and wrote two poems dedicated to her, Letter to Comrade Kostrov on the Essence of Love, and Letter to Tatiana Yakovleva. Some argued that, since it was Elsa Triolet Lilia's sister, who acquainted them, the liaison might have been the result of Breek's intrigue, aimed at stopping the poet from getting closer to Ellie Jones and especially daughter Patricia, but the power of this passion apparently caught her by surprise. Mayakovsky tried to persuade Tatiana to return to Russia but she refused. In the late 1929 he made an attempt to travel to Paris in order to marry her lover but was refused a visa for the first time, again, as many believed, due to Lilia's making full use of her numerous connections. It became known that she accidentally 
Read Mayakovsky out a letter from Paris alleging that Tatiana was getting married, while, as it turned out soon, the latter's wedding wasn't on the agenda at that very moment. Lydia Chukovskaya insisted it was the ever powerful Yakov Agronov, another one of Lilya's lovers, who prevented Mayakovsky's getting a visa. Upon her request, in the late 1920s, Mayakovsky had two more affairs with student later editor Natalia Bryakonenko (1905–1984) and with Veronika Polonskaya (1908–1994), 1908 a young mad actress, then the wife of actor Mikhail Yenshin. It was Veronica's unwillingness to divorce the latter that resulted in her rose with Mayakovsky, the last of which preceded the poet's suicide. Yet, according to Natalia Bryakonenko, it was not Polonskaya but Yakovleva whom he was pining for. In January 1929 Mayakovsky told me he would put a bullet to his brain if he didn't see that woman any time soon. She later remembered. Which, on 14 April 1930, he did. Topic. Works and critical reception Mayakovsky's early poems established him as one of the more original poets to come out of the Russian Futurism, a movement rejecting the traditional poetry in favor of formal experimentation, and welcoming the social change promised by modern technology. His 1913 verses, surreal, seemingly disjointed and nonsensical, relying on forceful rhythms and exaggerated imagery with the words split into pieces and staggered across the page, peppered with street language, were considered unpoetic in literary circles at the time. While the confrontational aesthetics of his fellow futurist group members' poetry were mostly confined to formal experiments, Mayakovsky's idea was creating the new, democratic language of the streets. In 1914 his first large work, an avant-garde tragedy Vladimir Mayakovsky came out. The fierce critique of the city life and capitalism in general was, at the same time, a paean to the modern industrial power, featuring the protagonist sacrificing himself for the sake of the people's happiness in the future. In September 1915, A Cloud in Trousers came out, Mayakovsky's first major poem of appreciable length. It depicted the subjects of love, revolution, religion, and art, written from the vantage point of a spurned lover. The language of the work was the language of the streets, and Mayakovsky went to considerable lengths to debunk idealistic and romanticized notions of poetry and poets. Backbone Flute 1916 outraged contemporary critics. Its author has been described as talentless charlatan, spurning empty words of a malaria sufferer. Some even recommended that he'd be hospitalized immediately. In retrospect it is seen as a groundbreaking piece, introducing the new forms of expressing social anger and personal frustrations. 1921 was a fruitful period for Mayakovsky, who greeted the Bolshevik Revolution with a number of poetic and dramatic works, starting with Ode to the Revolution 1918 and Left March 1918, a hymn to the proletarian might, calling for the fight against the enemies of the revolution. Mystery Booth 1918, revised version, 1921, the first Soviet play, told the story of a new nose arc, built by the unclean workers and peasants sporting moral cleanness and united by the class solidarity. In 1919-1921 Mayakovsky worked for the Russian Telegraph Agency Rasta. Painting posters and cartoons, he provided them with rhymes and slogans mixing rhythm patterns, different typesetting styles, and using neologisms which were describing the current events in dynamics. In three years he produced some 1100 pieces he called, Rasta Windows. In 1921 Mayakovsky's poem 150 Million came out, which hailed the Russian people's mission in igniting the world revolution, but failed to impress Lenin. The latter praised the 1922 poem. Re-conferences. Prozasidavsieza a scathing satire on the nascent Soviet bureaucracy starting to eat up the apparently flawed state system. Mayakovsky's poetry was saturated with politics, but the love theme in the early 1920s became prominent too, mainly in I Love 1922 and About That 1923, both dedicated to Lilia Breek, whom he considered a family member even after the two drifted apart, in 1923. In October 1924 appeared Vladimir Ilyich Lenin written on the death of the Soviet communist leader. While the newspapers reported of highly successful public performances, the Soviet literary critics had their reservations, G. Lelovich calling it, "...cerebral and rhetorical." 
Viktor Pertsov described it as wordy, naive, and clumsy. Mayakovsky's extensive foreign trips resulted in the books of poetry The West, 1922 1924, Paris, 1924 1925, Poems about America, 1925 1926, as well as a set of analytical satirical essays. In 1926, Mayakovsky wrote and published, Talking with the Taxman about Poetry. The first in a series of works criticizing the new Soviet philistinism, the result of the new economic policy. His 1927 epic All Right, sought to unite heroic pathos with lyricism and irony. Extolling the new Bolshevik Russia as the springtime of the human kind, it was praised by Lunacharsky as the October Revolution set in bronze. In his last three years Mayakovsky completed two satirical plays, The Bedbug 1929, and The Bathhouse, both lampooning bureaucratic stupidity and opportunism. The latter was extolled by Sevalid Meyerhold who rated it as high as the best work of Molière, Pushkin and Gogol and called it, "...the greatest phenomenon of the history of the Russian theatre." The fierce criticism both plays were met with in the Soviet press was overstated and politically charged, but still, in retrospect Mayakovsky's work in the 1920s is regarded as patchy, even Vladimir Ilyich Lenin and All Right, being inferior to his passionate and innovative 1910s work. Several authors, among them Valentin Katayev and close friend Boris Pasternak, reproached him for squandering enormous potential on petty propaganda. Marina Svetayeva in her 1932 essay the Art in the Light of Conscience", left a particularly sharp comment on Mayakovsky's death. For twelve years Mayakovsky the man has been destroying Mayakovsky the poet. On the thirteenth year the poet rose up and killed the man. His suicide lasted twelve years, not for a moment he pulled the trigger. <laughs> Legacy After Mayakovsky's death the Association of the Proletarian Writers' Leadership made sure the publications of the poet's work were cancelled and his very name stopped being mentioned in the Soviet press. In her 1935 letter to Joseph Stalin, Lilia Breek challenged her opponents, asking personally the Soviet leader for help. Stalin's resolution inscribed upon this message, read, Comrade Yezov, please take charge of Breek's letter. Mayakovsky is the best and the most talented poet of our Soviet epoch. Indifference to his cultural heritage amounts to a crime. Breek's complaints are, in my opinion, justified. The effect of this letter was startling. Mayakovsky was instantly hailed a Soviet classic, proving to be the only member of the artistic avant-garde of the early 20th century to enter the Soviet mainstream. His birthplace of Baghdati in Georgia was renamed Mayakovsky in his honor. In 1937 the Mayakovsky Museum and Library were opened in Moscow. Triumphal Square in Moscow became Mayakovsky Square. In 1938 the Mayakovskaya metro station was opened to the public. Nikolai Asayev received a Stalin Prize in 1941 for his poem, Mayakovsky Starts Here, which celebrated him as a poet of the revolution. In 1974 the Russian State Museum of Mayakovsky opened in the center of Moscow in the building where Mayakovsky resided from 1919 to 1930. As a result, for the Soviet readership Mayakovsky became just the poet of the revolution. His legacy has been censored, more intimate or controversial pieces ignored, lines taken out of contexts and turned into slogans like the omnipresent, Lenin lived, Lenin lives, Lenin shall live forever. The major rebel of his generation was turned into a symbol of the repressive state. The Stalin-sanctioned canonization has dealt Mayakovsky, according to Boris Pasternak, the second death, as the communist authorities started to impose him forcibly, like Catherine the Great did the potatoes. In the late 1950s and early 1960s Mayakovsky's popularity in the Soviet Union started to rise again, with the new generation of writers recognizing him as a purveyor of artistic freedom and daring experimentation. Mayakovsky's face is etched on the altar of the century, Pasternak wrote at that time. Young poets, drawn to avant-garde art and activism that often clashed with communist dogma, chose Mayakovsky's statue in Moscow for their organized poetry readings. Among the Soviet authors he influenced were Valentin Katayev, Andrei Voznesensky who called Mayakovsky a teacher and favorite poet and dedicated a poem to him entitled Mayakovsky in Paris and Yevgeny Yevtushenko. 
In 1967 the Taganka Theatre staged the poetical performance Listen Here, Beslezite based on Mayakovsky's works with the leading role given to Vladimir Vysotsky, who was also much inspired by Mayakovsky's poetry. Mayakovsky became well known and studied outside of the USSR. Poets such as Nazim Hikmay, Louis Aragon and Pablo Neruda acknowledged having been influenced by his work. He was the most influential futurist in Lithuania and his poetry helped to form the Four Winds movement there. Mayakovsky was a significant influence on American poet Frank O'Hara. O'Hara's 1957 poem, Mayakovsky, 1957, contains many references to Mayakovsky's life and works, in addition to, A True Account of Talking to the Sun at Fire Island, 1958, a variation on Mayakovsky's, An Extraordinary Adventure That Happened to Vladimir Mayakovsky One Summer at a Dacha, 1920. 1986 English singer and songwriter Billy Bragg recorded the album Talking with the Taxman about poetry, named after Mayakovsky's poem of the same name. In 2007 Craig Volk's stage biodrama Mayakovsky Takes the Stage based on his screenplay at the top of My Voice won the Penn USA Literary Award for Best Stage Drama. In the Soviet Union's final years there was a strong tendency to view Mayakovsky's work as dated and insignificant, there were even calls for banishing his poems from school textbooks. Yet on the basis of his best works, Mayakovsky's reputation was revived and by authors like Yuri Karabchievsky attempts have been made to recreate an objective picture of his life and legacy. Mayakovsky was credited as a radical reformer of the Russian poetic language who created his own linguistic system charged with the new kind of expressionism, which in many ways influenced the development of the Soviet and world poetry. The raging bull of Russian poetry. The wizard of rhyming an individualist and a rebel against established taste and standards." Mayakovsky is seen by many in Russia as a revolutionary force and a giant rebel in the 20th-century Russian literature. Bernd Alois Zimmermann included his poetry in his Requiem für einen jungen Dichter Requiem for a Young Poet, completed in 1969. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Poems A Cloud in Trousers, Oblako v. Stana 1915 Backbone Flute, Fleta Pozvanochnik 1915. The War and the World, Voina i Mir 1917. The Man, Selovic 1918 150 Million 1921. About That, Pro A2 Pro ETO, 1923 Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin 1924 A Flying Proletarian, Lettisage Proletarij 1925. All Right, Hiroso 1927 Topic. Poem cycles and collections The Early Ones, Pervo 1912-1924, 22 poems I, A 1914, 4 poems Satires, 1913-1927 23 poems, including Take That, 1914 The War, Voina 1914-1916, 8 poems Lyrics, Lyrica 1916, Lyrica 1916, 3 poems Revolution, Revolution 1917-1928, 22 poems, including Ode to Revolution, 1918 The Left March 1919 Everyday Life, Bit 1921 to 1924, 11 poems, including On Rubbish, 1921, Re-Conferences, 1922, The Art of the Commune, Iskustvo Komuni 1918 to 1923, 11 poems, including An Order to the Army of Arts, 1918, Agit Poems, Agit Poemi 1923, 6 poems, including the Mayakovsky Gallery. The West, Zapad 1922 1925, 10 poems, including, How Does the Democratic Republic Work? and The Eight Poem Paris Cycle. The American Poems, Stihi Ob Americ 1925 1926, 21 poems, including, The Brooklyn Bridge. On Poetry, O Poesi 1926, 7 poems, including, Talking with the Taxman about Poetry. For Sergei Yesenin. The Satires. 
1926, Satira 1926. 14 poems Lyrics, 1918–1924. Lyric 12 poems, including, I Love, 1922. Publicism, Publicistica 1926, 12 poems, including, To Comrade Net, A Steamboat and a Man, 1926. The Children's Room, Detska 1925–1929. Nine poems for children, including, What is Good and What is Bad? Poems, 1927-1928 56 poems, including, Lenin with Us. Satires. 1928, Satire. 1928, nine poems Cultural Revolution, Kulturna Revolution 1927-1928, 20 poems, including, Beer and Socialism. Agate, Agate 1928, 44 poems, including Yid. Rhodes, Darogi 1928, 11 poems. The First of Five, Pervai is Patti 1925, 26 poems. Back and Forth, Tuta i Obratno 1928-1930, 19 poems, including The Poem of the Soviet Passport. Formidable Laughter, Groznij Smey 1922-1930, more than 100 poems, published posthumously, 1932-1936 Poems, 1924-1930, Stihotvarinia 1924-1930, including A Letter to Comrade Kostrov on the Essence of Love, 1929 whom Shall I Become? Kem Bit Kem Byt, published posthumously 1931, poem for children, illustrated by N. A. Schifrin. Topic. Plays Vladimir Mayakovsky, Vladimir Mayakovsky, subtitled, Tragedy, 1914, Mystery Boof, Mysteria Buff, 1918, The Bed Bug, Klopp, 1929. The Bathhouse, Bana 1930 Moscow Burns. 1905, Moskvogorit, 1905, 1930 Topic. Essays and sketches My Discovery of America, Mo Atkriti Ameriki 1926, in four parts How to Make Verses, Kak Delit Stihi 1926 Topic. Literature Topic. References Topic. External links Vladimir Mayakovsky